And I got there, and I was just I was sort of ashamed <laughs> um, because I didn't have a book. Mm-hmm. And and this was not the, you know, national uh, poets with CDs <laughs> international festival. This is the International Readers and Writers Festival. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't have anything for people to read, and I don't have an example of my writing. And I and I realized that that was really what was next for me in my career. Um, I, I think that I think I think I have proven that I'm pretty good on a stage, and that I can tell a good story and I can engage an audience. I want the world to know that I write. Hello, love. Uh, <laughs> my so, um, I had I'd been looking, thinking about publishing and um, investigating options, uh, and I had a relationship with the press uh, with a. Um, press out of the area, um, Girl Child Press. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been published in two of their anthologies and written the foreword for one. I love I love the work that they do. I love the work they put out. I love um, the mission and focus around telling stories of women and girls of color. Um, and, and I was like, well, you know, I feel like in terms of fit, that's where my work belongs. Um, and so I contacted the head of the press, Michelle Sewell. And said, like I have, I want, I have a book, and I want, you know, kind of want to publish. What can you do? She said, send me a manuscript, and I'll look at it. Okay. <laughs> um, and then she said, sign these papers. Right. <laughs> and then, and then she sent me fifty fast facts. <laughs> I think we're gonna go someplace and take pictures of you in case you default. <laughs> um, no, she she was so supportive, and she loved the work. And apparently, poets are flaky, and they always say, I'm gonna send you a manuscript, right. and they don't. Um, <clears throat> but I did, and. She really liked the work, and she believes in, in my existence as a writer as mm-hmm. well as a performer. Okay. With me on this edition of Spoken Word of Joe's Place is Sonia Renee. Would you, would you, would you please uh, do something from the book? Sure, I'll do something. I can from see the cover book. upside down. It looks kind of slick. Yeah. I like that. Ooh, I've, with the coffee cup. Um, this piece is called Dreams for My Father, Wrestling the Possible, and it's for whatever you believe is possible in your life. My daddy wrestled a lion and saved my life last night. My daddy is not the lion wrestling type. Actually, he's the, I look good for my age, but after 20 years in the U.S. Navy, I got my butt a desk job kind of guy. He's a Libra. Balance. Not prone to wild fits of frenzy like fighting off 300-pound felines. (laughs) My dad and I don't talk much. When we do, it's all pleasantries and fluff. The last word in every conversation is a trembling domino, terrified of being the one to start the collapse. We're both so afraid that this house of cards we built on our laps will fall. He and I are sort of like black ice. We look just fine on the surface. But every now and then, I long for a collision, for the invisible chaos underneath our wheels to halt the pretense. Some days, I pray for a large, gaping wound to expose the blood. I try not to ask my father for things, like money or time, or love. That heavy no always falls on my chest, breaks stuff, and I'm out of crazy glue. But please do not mistake this for a my daddy wasn't there poem, because he was. And when my mother vanished in a puff of crack smoke, my disabled brother and I ate because my dad worked. He made it possible for me to grow up a middle-class black girl in a city where military money made kids think we were rich. But somewhere along the way, he forgot that princesses never stopped needing their daddies. And while there was no wicked witch, there was a Cinderella and a very human stepmother with fears of her own in a home that was not big enough for the both of us and a father who turned into a a pillar of salt because I kept on looking back and like the millions of things I've ruined in my life. I try not to think about that, but my daddy fought a lion for me last night. And I know it might not seem remotely likely, but lots of impossible things have been happening as of late, and it's starting to affect my sleep. See, on November 4th, Tuesday of that week, I went to bed, and when I woke up, a black man was president. I went to bed last night, and my daddy, my graduated from college a year after me, married with two children at the age of 19, daddy was president in my crazy old dream. And there was no one in the White House except for him and me, but this house was not made out of trembling dominoes or a deck of 
cards, the chairs in this house were hard and solid, like the foundation of two people who have finally learned how to love each other. And we walked around that White House sharing secrets and exploring hidden rooms, like a daddy and his daughter watching cartoons when she was nine. And I was suddenly transported to a time when our relationship was not a broken watch. My father was a man who knew me and loved me and showed me it was so. And I don't know how we ended up in the White House backyard, but we were having such a good time. We must have been caught off guard because a lion sprang out of nowhere and tried to attack but my daddy, y'all. The man I haven't trusted my heart with in 15 years had my back. My daddy fought that lion for me. And I know it's just a dream and it might not make any sense, but as of that Tuesday and ever since, something in me has shifted. And maybe y'all missed it, but two little girls who finally look like me just might be in a White House playing hide and seek with their daddy. And I never thought that was plausible. So I'm going to call my father tonight. I'm going to tell him I love him. Believe that he will return those words and mean it. Because I woke up this morning certain that anything is possible.